Hello. Hello there, Thomas. Hello, live. I think we've got past the uh, the technical difficulties. We good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. I think we're good. Oh, are, you we're just gonna, in... are we just rolling from now? We're rolling. Josh, how are you? I am good, mate. How are you? I am very well. I'm better now that I've actually managed to get my uh, my internet working, mate. So life is all good. It's 2023. Internet should just work. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Absolutely Which ridiculous. Everyone needs to vote Labour so that we all get free Wi-Fi and minimum wages up to thirty pounds an hour. Is that is that what they've promised? No, it's what they promised like a few um, a few elections ago. I don't really pay attention you, to it. Are you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you much of a politics man? I can imagine you. No, I can imagine. You know what? I can imagine you sat there with your your fox red Labrador smoking a pipe, <laughs> looking out yeah, on your balcony, conservative through and through. <laughs> <laughs> but no. now how's uh how's things been mate yeah things have been good um obviously since the last podcast i have competed in germany and it, it's fair to say that he didn't go to plan uh but i'm not going to speak too much about it because i feel like as soon as i start talking about it it's like 20 minutes later and i've not stopped complaining so just know people i came fifth out of a truly unbelievable class in my class, there was three world champions and I beat two of them. One of which was Ooh. the chap that beat me two years ago. So we're seeing that as a big win. Uh, but everything that you could imagine to go wrong did go wrong. And that's how we're going to leave it. If you want to find out more, you can watch my YouTube video or Tom could ask me loads of questions now. Either or. Yeah, we had a shit wanna, time. And I hate we... Germany. Okay, so just give us like a brief rundown. Don't go into too much detail because obviously yeah, okay. we've left people on a little bit of a cliffhanger. But before we do get stuck into that, people, I just want to mention this Friday, the 17th, we have a brand new all-in bodybuilding launch on the rise. Use code BSB15 for 15% off the cleanest garms in the game. If you want to get t-shirts just like this. Oh, Check oh, it out, really the nice, SP15. Awesome. You know where to go. Link in the bio. Yeah, buddy. but anyway, Josh. So, give us a brief rundown. You don't have to go into too much detail, mate. But Germany, Germany flight was delayed. How was, how, how was the trip overall? Uh, how was the trip overall? Uh, by Saturday night, I just wanted to come home, and I will com competing on Sunday. So, yeah, right. um, yeah. There were just loads of little things that like. When you, any show, whether you're competing abroad or competing at home, you've probably got, you know, maybe five slip ups that you can make before it starts to like truly affect how you look on stage. And we're talking like meal timings, uh, food sources, um, sleep. Oh God, so many things, right? that that can just affect the overall look in like really big ways and yeah every single one of them went wrong multiple times over the space of three days and it were all going smoothly going into like so i flew friday competed on sunday friday morning i was so confident i was like i am on i'm on today i can rock and roll today <laughs> uh, and then the plan was to just continue eating food continue chilling um, but Germany had other, other, other ideas. The flight were delayed. So we didn't get there till two hours later after we were meant to, that meant that we had no time to, well, I had no time to train. I had no time to go and get my food shopping. I had to go and get polygraph tested. There were just loads of things that like I had time for. And then suddenly I had no time for it. Um, if I didn't get polygraph tested, I obviously couldn't compete. So that took priority over everything. Uh, but yeah, it was just a load of shit, basically. Saturday in Germany, um, nothing opens till lunchtime and everything shuts at two. So didn't get my first meal until like one o'clock in the afternoon, which wasn't ideal. Um, on the Sunday, nothing is open in Germany. And I mean nothing. So when I ran out of food on Saturday and I went to go and get some more, thinking, oh yeah, I'll just go and get some more fresh food. There was nowhere to buy it from. And I genuinely what? mean nowhere. Like all the supermarkets were short, no corner shops. Only thing that was open were petrol stations. So the majority of my carb load came from like just random food sources, like really, really terrible quality of packet rice. 
Um, and yeah, oh, yeah. I'd like even right. at the show, I had to like steal some of David's squares bars because I literally I had nothing. I had nothing. Um, so yeah, by that, but by the time that we're at the show, I was like, yeah, I look shit. I'm not happy. Let's just do this and like go home. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's, that's Germany. So yeah, like I said, I came fifth. I'm, I am happy with my placing to be fair, cause, um, there's not many Euro, well, I think it's actually the only European pro show. And this year the WMBF made it a, like a requirement that you need to do a pro show before you go over to the worlds, not necessarily to qualify, but to, you know, kind of cr- give a little bit more like gravitas to actually winning the worlds. Uh, you've yeah. actually got to do a show prior to it, and then yeah. Anyway, so uh, hang on. So when you're a, when you're a pro, you're the the worlds is like an open finals. Well, it was. It's not anymore. Okay, so yeah, it was. But now this year, you have to have just competed, but you wouldn't have had to place like top three or anything like that. Yeah, I think in okay. time, what they're hoping for because. The WMBF is growing at a ridiculous rate. Like they, they they put on Instagram nearly every week that they've got a new affiliate for like random countries. Like I think yeah. recently I saw they've got Mauritius, Nigeria, Tunisia, like loads of countries just like that you wouldn't think, oh yeah, they'll be into bodybuilding. They are now into bodybuilding. Each well, they've got, country <laughs> They've gone into Nigeria now, mate. So that's it. We're all fucked because they're just gonna bring over they're they're gonna bring over some fucking freaks dude (laughs) basically basically yeah um fantastic so yeah so the pro league is going to grow a lot over the next two or three years and i think it will get to the point where you've got to come top three in a pro show to be able to even consider going to the world that's good though yeah yeah, i I think that's what's that's what's necessary across the board because otherwise you just end up with Right, one show of the year that like has any importance, um, everyone goes and you end up with classes of like 30, 40 people. And it's, too it's much. yeah, it's, it's wild. Like, well, we all know what that's like. You're not going to get seen. Um, no, it's not standard. only that, though. Like, there's going, there's going to be pros there from certain countries where maybe the competitive, you know, like bloodline isn't great. And yeah. you're going to have guys at the prestigious world finals that maybe aren't of caliber. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that, but I mean, like, because they've earned it. You can't it, call it I a guess. world if some people wouldn't win a regional in the UK. Like, yeah. that's how I see it, and I think that's yeah, how yeah. they're seeing it now. So, yeah, this year it's got it's got even more gravitas to actually get there in the first place, and, yeah, hopefully going forward it will get even more competitive. But I know it will. Like, I've said... Some of the guys turning pro are crazy. One of, one of the boys, he came second uh, in my class. He won his pro card that day um, and then came second in a pro worlds, uh, in a pro class, which is ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, we were sitting at the back of the stage and he tapped me and went, he went, ah, oh, brother, I, f- I watch your YouTube videos. I was like, oh, great. And now you're about to beat me. He went, no, 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 you're looking good. I was like, mate, I'm looking shit. <laughs> but you are going to beat me, as is most you. of the people here. But overall, right, it was an unbelievable show. It was so well run. The Like my stage time, I think I was on for about 50 minutes. Like really? That shows not only how tight it was, but how seriously they took it. Because I'm sure the judges could have very easily gone like, it's so fucking close. Everyone pick what everyone picks someone for first, second, and third. We'll leave it at that. But no, they, they took the time. Um, yeah, like I say, really, really, really well run. Standard was just insane. What time um, was you on? What time was I on? I was on at about seven fifteen. I was meant to be on at like six thirty ish. So gone okay. so over still, a little still, bit. So they still leave men's physique till last. Kind no, of. No, no, they left the pro show till last. Oh, so men's physique was actually on at like lunchtime. Okay. Uh, and then they had the pro men's physique and then pro bodybuilding. Pro bodybuilding was out of this world. Well, mate, I saw your, I saw you on stage, like through a story, um, through Steph's story. And um, yeah, unreal. Like even the other classes as well, mate, the caliber there was unreal. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we had David on in the last podcast and David didn't place 
at all. And David's that's not got an incredible shit. physique. That's that saying it was wild. Yeah, and this is the thing with natural bodybuilder man. Everyone's like, oh yeah, you're just small, like you know, like the, the standard. Go to a good pro show. Go to a good yeah. natural pro show, and you will never look like those guys. And you know, yeah. unreal. But, but bear that in mind, right? What you've just said, Sam, my my videographer, who I obviously took to Germany. He's been to so many shows, so many. And when we're having this tea after, it was like, I'm not, I'm not joking when I say this. This has been the best standard show that I've ever been to. Yeah. That, right. And that's good. <laughs> Sam's been to bloody IFBB pro shows. Yeah. And that is that is saying everything, isn't it? They cut the condition for every single guy was on. Yeah. You know, I didn't see one guy out of shape. Me. Apart, yeah, apart from you. Like I saw apart when it, when the me. camera panned over to you, I was like, whoa, who's that, who's that guy? I was like, oh, yeah. oh, it's Josh. What, what has Josh been doing? Oh, he's been eating <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible food. <laughs> yeah, you carb loaded on like, uh, like what do you call a bratwurst? <laughs> yeah, no, no, chicken schnitzel and fries. <laughs> Because I asked for chicken and potatoes, and that is what they presented us with. That's all you get. That's all you get, dude. And then they but were like, "No, I." When I saw you though, shit. when I when I saw you on uh, on that story, I was like, "He doesn't look like himself. He doesn't look like the usual like cheeky chappy, you know." Because you've usually got like this bit of like not sass, but kind of like me in the sense of like you're enjoying your time on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like you're you're there, and you can tell that you you know some people jump on stage and they've got a face like a smacked ass, and they look like it's probably nerves more than anything. But I feel so comfortable on stage, and Same. you probably do too. It's just like yeah. you're in your element. You weren't in your element, man. No, no. Um, look, if you saw that from a few frigging stories, I yeah. knew, I knew. Right, I never stick around for judges' feedback. I waited until the end to to go and speak to Steph because you were on the panel. And uh, she just she just said, are you okay? I was like, mm. yeah, I'm fine. She said, you didn't look as though that you wanted to be there from the second that no. you came out. And honestly, I don't. If I could right now, I would go home. I would fly home immediately and just be done with it because it would just stress from start to finish. Um, but yeah, there were so many things that just went wrong, honestly. Um, I, I, if there's one thing that I could say like, oh, I wish I could change that, and like go back in time and change it. I didn't take Annabella um, because she couldn't get the time off work. And honestly, having Annabella there to like, Annabella's like seriously organized. She's an accountant. Her <laughs> her due diligence with everything is shit hot. And I needed her there to to do to deal with all that stuff. And yeah. So next well, week, even, Seattle. Even- even having her there, mate, definitely take her to Seattle. Fucking hell. But even um, just I'm having her, uh, she knows how you tick, like, you know, mentally. And you've had her there for so many shows that whether you realize it or not, like, she's probably a bit of a comfort blanket, mate. Like, she's someone that oh. you can, like, you, you can, she can rationalize your thoughts. And, like, if you say something that's stressing you out, she's going to iron it out. She's going to say, no, look, if you think about it in this way, like, we'll be absolutely fine. We'll just do this. And obviously, she can physically help you out as well, prep shit. So, yeah. Yeah, man. That's. I think that's. It's. It's a good thing, but at the same time, it's like as an athlete, maybe you need to learn how to not have her there at the same time. I don't know, but no, no, no. I'm just going to be out. going forwards. <laughs> I know I, I'm going to be so like Annabella. You're coming. I'm not doing a show <laughs> if you're not coming. Um, there we go. Yeah, I already know what shows I'm going to do next time as well. Oh, I can't wait. Do you want to share? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll share. So after the show, um, I was speaking to a lovely chap called Charles Barkley. Have you seen him on Kez's stories? Kez has been doing his like posing coaching. Isn't Charles Barkley a... Mate, I um, swear he's a basketball player. Charles Barkley, I swear it's like a, a band or a singer. He's a basketball player, surely. He's someone famous, I'm certain. American former basketball player, power yeah. forward. Yeah, how do you know that? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I was talking to Charles Barkley, not Charles Barkley, Charles Barkley, but Charles Barkley, WNBF, United Arab Emirates. And he was saying that they're going to host a pro show in September 2025. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Dubai and then New York and then compete at the Worlds, wherever, wherever that is. Oh, do, are you saying we? We? Because there's going to be agree. an amateur show as well on the qualifier. Yeah, definitely. I think multiple we pro cards as well, not just the one. BSB on tour. Oh, So boy. I don't know how it's going to work, right? I don't know how it's going to work. So I was told this year that if I wanted to compete in the WMBF qualifiers this year, like Chris did, I would have had to compete the year before. Yeah, but Chris didn't, did he? he can't, Chris competed two years ago. Oh. So yeah, am, I, yeah. look, I, I, am I fine with, then? With any ruling, mate, right? You've got to remember that th this, this goes for everyone that's listening to this podcast with anything in life. With any kind of ruling, you've got to remember that there's a human being enforcing the rule, right? If if the human being looks at like, oh yeah, Tom's not competed with the WMBF UK since 2023, but then they literally use their brain and they go, well, Tom's not had an opportunity to since 2023 without him having to prep for another 20 odd weeks to then do one show. They, they will look at that and go, no, that's fine, Tom. Go go to Dubai. I need time go to wherever improve. you want. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, fuck yeah, we're going to do that then, mate. Dubai. Dubai. I'm, yeah, I at least, it's like maximum for me, four shows. So I'll do WMBF UK. I'll do, I'll do the Germany. I'll do the Dubai. I have a thought as well, right? I've noticed okay. this in myself this past two weeks. When were you at your best this year? Northerns. Right. What was the weather like? Well, it wasn't as cold. It no was glorious, near as cold. wasn't it? It was actually pretty pretty decent, yeah. I I genuinely think you can prep and be in that stage lean condition longer if your environment that you find yourself in is more forgiving to the human body. Cold weather is not for anybody. Dark nights, dark mornings. It will take it out on your fatigue. It'll take it out on your uh, take it out on your physique. It'll take it out on your your mental state. If you can be in like a warmer environment for a longer period of time, you're going to end up. Well, you. But I, I truly believe your body's going to thank you for it, and you'll end up in a better position come show day or just like the longevity of your season. So if you you know if you competed in Dubai and then you looked at like right, I'll stay in Dubai for two or three weeks mm -hmm. as opposed to just going for a long weekend. You might end up with a better outcome prep-wise. So like you could compete, you could compete in Dubai, chill there for two, three weeks, come back to the UK, compete at the Supernaturals. Yeah. And you, you, you'll feel fresh. You will feel fresh. There's no two ways about it. So, so that felt, show, the Dubai show will be, be before the Supernaturals UK? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's mate. Let's fucking do it. Let's get it like organized. Let's let's get it in place. Like it's let's two get years, mate. It's in no, place. I know, I know. But mate, I'm ex I'm genuinely so excited to prep again. It's a joke. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Like I I I'm enjoying my my cookie stacks and my you know m my food right now. I'm yeah, excited to grow. I can tell looking at your at, face. At the same time, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. Um, I can uh, I can. I, I'm just excited because I like I know what I want and that's it. You know, I'm just like boof, I know what I want. That's it, set in stone. And obviously the element of us, you know, doing it side by side is also very, very exciting, mate. So that's another thing to look forward to. Yeah. No, I'm very exciting. Um, how are you, mate? How's how's the last couple of weeks been for you? Good. Yeah, good. So um this past week has been a it's actually it's three weeks post show today. Um, so that is going very well. We're currently up by three and a half kgs. So not That's too much awesome. at all. Yeah, not too much at all. It just it's just holding in my face. Um and we had a deload last week just because my body was battered still, like absolutely battered, just not recovering from training. Motivation, to be honest, like when you know, like when you're getting ready to go to the gym and it's like, oh, 
like usually I'm like excited every single session, yeah. but it was just, it was just like a chore. Um, digestion was pretty shit as well. So we took a deload uh, for about six days. This past week has been the first week back in and I feel like only just now off season's actually got started. So food's going up three and a half K on a training day and then 3,040 calories on a non-training and uh, the goal, mate, is just to get like quite a, a good bump of initial body weight just to get me feeling even fresher. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to push me up to around 76 kg over the next couple of weeks. And then from there, just take it slow. But yeah, apart from that, mate, good. Like, I'm definitely more energized, as yeah. people listening to this can probably tell. Um, so, yeah, all good. All is good. Have you started a new training program or anything since the end of prep? Yes, I have. Yes. At what point did you implement that that change in training plan? Um, it was about a week after. Right. So pretty quick. Yeah. 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 But like, like the actual the overarching structure of the training program is it's the same split. It's the same kind of. Um, it's just volume has been brought right down, and we've got a little bit of a rejig of some exercises just yeah. for what we want to focus on. Um, yeah. So yeah, just more inclined movements, for instance, uh, a little bit more volume on the arms, like it's just very very basic stuff. Because yeah. if it's not broken, don't fix it. But what about yourself? Yeah. I, I normally normally coming out of a show, I because it. <sighs> Your program changes, doesn't it, over prep? Like you might take a set out here or you might take an intensifier out there. What I will do is I'll basically run the same program probably for three weeks and I'll try and get my body weight up with that. And then once I feel like I'm happy with my body weight and everything's like my strength's on the rise again, that's when I'll make the changes. Um, so it's like almost springboarding even more like, like runways of pr progress. Does that make sense? Well, coming out of a prep as well, um, you're in an impaired position to be able to recover. So it's like if you're pretty beat down and then you're just like, here's a load of new stimulus. Yeah. It's a little bit of a shock to the system. So yeah, completely changing training. I wouldn't do that right away. Um, maybe, you know, some people would <laughs> like that because it's like, oh, it's a fresh leaf. But now nah, it's like, yeah. keep running with what you've been doing get a little bit of extra food in, your body's going to thank you for it. Then once you're in a bit more of a responsive position in terms of recoverability, um, then get some new training stimulus in there because that's obviously going to, you know, you, you're going to be able to cope with it better. And as you said, a bit more of a runway as well, springing board, springboarding off of that. But yeah, no, that's so that's the, that's what you're going to do this year as well. I, I, yeah, I think so. I've, I've done it with a few of my boys that have competed this year and I've seen some like, really good progress from doing that like you know you, you you end up almost getting pbs on movements that you've been doing for a long time and then you switch a few things and then it's like fucking hell more progress for not a great amount of effort so yeah that is definitely what i'll be doing same program for a bit then switch and then and then it'll be christmas and i'll just be a fat fat pig in a blanket i bet you're looking forward to it though man like it's been a Obviously, you're not done yet, but unreal season so far, and it's only just. That if, I, I feel. I feel like it's. Uh, mate, how, how many? How many? Okay, so go over your uh, placings this year. Yeah, yeah. First in okay. PCA, first in Summer Shredding Classic Regional, first in my class in Summer Shredding Classic Championships, and then third in the overall there, and then fifth in my Walhalla Pro European Pro debut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but bad. That, what what show? Oh, I can't remember that show. I've gone. Yeah, sorry, gone sorry, sorry. What show? What show? <laughs> Actually, I don't know where my medal is for it either. Did you get a medal? I got. Yeah, I got a medal saying fucking fifth place. I'm like Jesus. Uh, well, mate, you uh, you don't bring golds in the house anyway. You don't bring uh, anything apart from gold in the house, do you? So there we go. No, you know the score. You know the Whereas score. Whereas my trophy um, shelf, mate, is full of that silver and bronze. <laughs> It, and participation oh, medals. Oh, no, honestly. That that little little fifth place medal. Mm. Oh, dear. How long oh, how long dear. do you run uh, a training program for typically? Oof. My current training program. I've been running the same program, the same program apart from three movements. 
since February. Three right. movements I changed. I took out Smith uh, bench press. I took out extreme prime row. Uh, and I took out... What's the other one that I took out? Uh, Smith shoulder press. Everything else is the exact same, minus intensifiers at this point in prep. And why did you take them out? Uh, because it was like I just weren't recovering, and I was worried. So on my last prep, I ended up with a really minor bicep tear, and it was from doing drop sets of cable curls. So ever since then, I've just been super ma- like super wary of like right. I'm not having that happen again because that ruined my like last four weeks of training. Um, Did it in peak week on the run up to getting my pro card. That was good fun. Um, Yeah. So my arm went nice and swollen. So yeah, I just kind of, I just kind of took it out once, took them out once. I um, thought, oh no, I'm pretty lean now. Probably don't want to be getting any injuries. Um, Sometimes I will end up just like ad hoc, just one more out if they feel good. Like, oh, you didn't train with us the other night, did you, in Prophecy? I was like, fucking drop set king on this side raise machine. Yeah, um, you, you're, you're, uh, so I'm guessing like you're a big component of just like kind of auto, auto, auto regulating. Things. Yeah. So like if it's there, take it. Like, you know, yeah. if you're feeling good, if you're feeling fresh, you're, having, you're enjoying your session, just push it a yeah. bit harder. I sometimes say that to my clients as well, like regardless of what phase they're in, if they're if they're having a session and they're like enjoying what they're doing, just do another set of it. Mm-hmm. Like say if I've got them doing two sets of a movement and they think, no, nah, I really enjoyed that, just do a third. It's not that deep. Yeah, it might it might absolutely fuck you later on in the session, but at the end at the end of the day, you've got to enjoy it. If you're gonna do more of what you enjoy, then like, you know, win a win a chicken dinner, you'll take you'll take the the regression on the chin. That's so important, man. Like, so, so important, just that enjoyability factor of things. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're heading into a session and you're just not looking forward to it, like, you know, your your training isn't fun. Like, this is what I always say. Like, whenever I start, like, set up my guys on, like, new training programs, I'm like, look, this is set up so that obviously it's tailored towards your goal and exactly what it is that we need to achieve. Like, I have structured this around you and this (laughs) is what I feel is going to work best. However, if you get started with it and you just, there's anything in there that you're just not a fan of like and you've tried it multiple times you've generally given it the time and day we've you know tried to like work on your execution and make it feel good and you just don't like it we'll switch it it's like it's not an issue because i'd rather you enjoy it be excited because then you're going to perform you know and if it's enjoyability equals adherence like long long term and again like if you like your training program like you obviously like yours you'll be sticking like yeah, since February, and that's a long fucking time to be running the training program. So, um, yeah, it? And like to not get bored of it at all in that period of time, it must hmm. must be not shit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> wait, I don't, I don't, I don't. What is that at the same time? No, I don't feel like you need to like, like what's it? What makes your training fun though? Is it the outcome or is it the actual movement itself? I don't like. I'm, I don't do a movement and I'm like oh, this is so fun right now. I'm having such a great time. It's like, no, like I'm doing this movement because I know long-term it's going to get me closer towards my goal. And that's that's where I enjoy my enjoyability from it. Yes, yeah. some movements feel good. Yes, some mo- movements feel bad. Do I want to do a stiff-legged deadlift when I'm like, you know, single-digit body fat, have no energy? Does it feel good? No, but I do it because I know it's, you know, I still do it uh, because I, of a long-term goal. I, I was going to ask you that. Did you... I know that you did stiff leg deadlifts in your off season. Did you keep them in all the way throughout your prep? Um, so we would pull them out uh, when we got closer to a show. So basically, right. like they, we did quite a lot of D volume. So when when we when we would do that, we would just pull them out. So very 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 close like the first couple shows yes just because i still felt pretty fucking good uh, yeah. but then as it got towards the end they did get pulled out just because it wasn't you know in terms of like risk versus reward it's just it, it, it didn't make sense and as well as yeah. that i would be in the absolute bin um afterwards for like days so yeah they were pulled out for like the last last couple shows beautiful beautiful what, you, what beautiful. big what, what are your big movements right now and do you have them in still Seriously, um, seeing as you're less than a week out, 
Uh, I I only RDL'd for a little bit uh, this off season. Um, I think how my show days have fallen, like literally doing a show every two weeks. I haven't I haven't done a hip hinge since the start since mid September. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's like the start of November now. So that's quite a long time without doing a movement, doing hip hinging, which is, you know, difficult. I enjoy it. Oh, I wish I'd have kept it. In. I think it was just like me being scared of getting injured. That's why I took it out. So yeah. this is like, so this is one of the downfalls of being self coached. I don't like I, that decision. I made that solely on my own. I didn't bounce it off anyone or like, I didn't go oh, Tom, what do you think of this? I just did it and thought, all right, this this seems like it makes sense to me. Whereas, I, like you know, if you are working with a coach, that kind of big decision that ha- that does have a potential to impact the end outcome of your physique, it would have been good to bounce that off of someone. But hey ho, I don't look like shit now, so it can't have been that bad. Well, you look the best you'd look, mate. So there we go. If you want to back me, if you want any, if you want to bounce anything, mate, psh, fire it my way. If you trust my opinion, next time I may mate. not be a pro. I may not be a pro, but oh, all right. Well, right. You, have you seen my uh, latest physique update that I put on Instagram this morning? Yes. Uh, what What do you think right now, bro? Do you think Do you think I'm okay? Do, do I think you're okay? Yeah. I'm really worried that I'm fat. Let's have a look. Do you know what? I'm going to put you up on screen right now. I'm gonna edit you in the first oh. photo ever. Oh, that that was that this morning. No, that was like Friday night. Friday night. Who took these photos? Alex Challoner. Um, I, I, I've been doing some content for my wonderful sponsors, MBW, um, Natural Bodybuilding Worldwide dot com. Um, we we have exclusive training content of the top natural bodybuilders within the UK. Um, and we're creating content for that website and yeah that's what them photos are from is this after some food no mate that's after 85 grams of carbs and was that like how many days it had been since you'd had a bit of a feed uh that had been five days since i'd had (laughs) over 150 grams of carbs why saying that though man like you're still like you're still decently vascular yeah yeah. So Do you like, know what else I, I've done this week? I've not took well, any pre-workout. I've no pump, no stim, like stim pre-workouts, that is. And you I feel want... like your vascularity's got better? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't take too many photos to directly compare, but what I'm wanting is when I compete next weekend... I'm going to put the pre-workout, like the pump formula in from Elite Subs, discount code JC10. Um, and it's j- I'm just going to explode. Okay, so you're like, you're, you're resensitizing. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, have you, heard, uh, have you ever heard something so stupid in your life, but it might just work? Well, if it's psychologically going to help you as well, mate, there's nothing wrong with a bit of a placebo effect, and there might actually be some premise behind that. Because if you, if you, dude, if you do, you take pre-workout caffeine before you go on stage. No. Okay. Oh no, I, I have actually. I, I did live um, not in Germany, in Texas, because mm-hmm. because I were on so much, I was like, fuck it, I need, I need some caffeine. Hmm. And it, I, I would good. say, yeah, it just helped just dry me out just a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, you, have you been doing less cardio or have you been doing any cardio? What define cardio? So like, are you doing low intensity, steady state or anything like that? I'm just doing steps. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, well, so it's, that's just like general activity, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 15, you, look like you're, steps. you look like you're definitely like lower stress in general. That's probably maybe due to the fact you're taking less pre-workout and that because your vascularity looks good, man. Hmm. Like a body when it's tired, it just doesn't have that pop. It just doesn't have that vascularity. So I think you're in a pretty, like in a pretty good position, mate. To be honest. Oh, thanks, mate. Thank Face you. is still nice and sucked in as well. Like when I saw you the other day, uh, very nice little trip as well with uh, elite ups. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's probably a little bit. How did you find that? It was a little bit stressful for you. How did I find it? I I, I really enjoyed it. I did not enjoy the drive home. 
that like Liverpool to Sheffield normally takes two hours and it was just like I'm telling you it was three hours and 55 minutes it was a frigging joke you had you had a long drive there as well didn't you yeah 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 mate traffic both times just terrible terrible over three hours going there and just under four hours coming back that is not what we want do you know why that is because everyone's trying to leave Rotherham mate the shit out. <laughs> Uh, actually, the traffic was like, worse coming do like, in. Do you like in the zom- zombie apocalypse films when like all the roads are just blocked and congested and people are in the cars fighting? That's mate. what it's like when you're going towards Rotherham, mate. If there was ever a zombie apocalypse in Rotherham, the bus station would be busier than the roads. <laughs> Not many people have cars. <laughs> really? No, nah, no, nah, of course they do. Of course they do. They're just nicked. <laughs> um, and to be fair, really? mate, if there was a zombie apocalypse, like... I think you would gladly be able to just walk through the zombies because they're just looking at you like, mate, there's nothing on him. No, like, no, they'll just... look at me and be like, he's a brother. He's one of us. <laughs> they just see the face and they run away from you, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but now nah, you're honestly, mate, you're looking, you're looking nuts. Absolutely nuts. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I am happy. I saw those um, photos from a gym that you went to. Um, I don't know if it's like the owner just reposting it, like really, oh, yeah, yeah, really yeah. like erotic close-ups. Oh of, like, yeah, your back and your chest. Tom, she went, she went. Josh, turn around. Let me, let me, uh, let me just have a look at your bag. Uh, for anyone that's viewing, I'm, I've got oh. it up right now. Right, she took that and then she was like, "Can I put it on Instagram?" I went, what do you mean? Put what on Instagram? She went, oh, "I've got a photo." But then she took like, like whilst I was just stood talking to her, she's just taking photos of me. I'm like, all right, okay. You'll find them on some weird website now, mate. Yeah, Instagram is the weird website. Um, Nah, she's, yeah. Shout out to Muscle Performance in Sheffield. It's probably where I'm going to train 100% of the time as soon as I finish prep. I like it's it's such a lovely environment, and um, yeah, the owners are the owners are our bodybuilders, so they are mad supportive of of anything that I do, and they push me to be better. And yeah, I really appreciate them. That's that's sweet, man. Yeah. Um, what was you gonna say? People. Question. So, comparing yourself to the pros from what you've just competed against. Uh-huh. Um, what would you say, apart from shit just going wrong, what would you say about your physique needs to be improved in order to stand toe-to-toe with these guys or give you a better chance? I, I'm being 100% honest. The posing was different to what I would normally do. So in the US, when when I last competed with the WMBF, if you were slightly side on in your front shot, they would tell you, we want to see both hips. We want to see both hips. And if you didn't twist, they would literally go, read out your number and put you right to the side of the stage. They did not want to fuck with you. If you weren't doing the pose now, they want you to do it, you were done. You weren't getting placed at all. Is that hip straight on? Yeah. So like literally your front shot was shoulder, shoulder, hip, hip. No twist. I'm fucked then. Bro. Right in Germany, front shot and side shot. Some people didn't move. Really? Yeah. So I was a bit like miffed. Like, how come these guys aren't getting called out for it? Because I could just do that, make my waist look really, really small. But I'm trying to do it properly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think if I had my time again, I'd just, I'd just do my side shot from the front. So they were twisting that much. They were twisting that much. You should see the guy that won. It looked like his waist was like that big, like tiny, tiny, so tiny, tiny. You've gone in there pretty much adhering to similar rules to what you're following at the last pro show. Yeah. How can they have different rules? I don't understand. Because there is a variance, like the judges, the majority will be US judges in the US and the minority will be from the rest of the world. Right. The rest of the world quite clearly don't give a shit if it's front or side or like a side front hybrid. So, um, yeah. That's, that's I know, I'm not saying that for the sake of me, even though it would benefit me greatly because I've got a fucking bungalow waist from the front if I don't have a twist. But 
men's physique is all about that crazy, crazy, crazy V taper, man. I think you should be able to get a twist regardless. I don't see why it's penalized. We'll see. We'll see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If there's so, one thing that I, I absolutely love or loved about competing at the Worlds last time, the judges were like, before the show, the judges were open and happy to give you feedback before you'd even stepped on stage. So like you could go to them and go, this is my front shot. What do I need to do? <clears throat> Hiccup then. And they would say, do this, do that, move your arm. Da, 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 da. And it's like, fucking hell, this is a dream. This is ideal. And then you can just do that on stage, Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll just ask him before. I'll just be like, look, this is what's happened in Germany. This is what I'm planning on doing. What should I do? And then they'll give me an honest answer. Do that then. And then you'll know. And then you'll go on stage with that confidence, mate. Yeah. Mate, I'm going to go on stage confident regardless. Like, like mate, this I'm is so the, excited. This is the thing, right? I know shit went wrong for you. And like, in terms of the weighting of that show, there's obviously a lot on you because it was like your, well, it's not technically your pro debut, but it kind of is your pro debut, isn't it? It felt like it. Yeah, yeah, it felt like it. So obviously for all that to go wrong, it's, this is where you need to like be able to learn now to be able to keep your fucking head screwed on no matter what. Yeah. You know, it's like the Olympia just gone, for instance. We know that uh, Brandon... Brandon, yeah. he was in a hospital just before and he came fourth, you know, and fuck knows how he did that. But uh, I think that's just something that will come with with time because no doubt, mate, like the more pro shows you do, like you're going to have a situation where shit doesn't go right again. Yeah. You know, and it's like yeah. me, for instance, uh, it doesn't even compare, but like with my last show with the WMBF, I knew, compare. I knew like I just wasn't my best. So again, I just fucking had fun with it and had no expectations just jumped on that stage and it actually helped me on stage in the sense of like i just let go of that stress accepted yeah. it for what it was and i just like was like all right i'm just gonna have fun and good, that, good as on I said you, last, yeah as, in, as i said in that last po podcast probably bumped me up a, a place you know at least yeah. a place just from purely posing because the guy behind me he was jacked he was ridiculous and he was probably more fitting with the guys that came one two three like yeah. i was smaller than him you know um so, so yeah, man, like, I feel like it's just un how competitive you are and how much weight you put on yourself. Um, you know, and you've got the, the added element of like, you've got Sam now fucking recording you and like, you know, there's a video going on as well. Like pro debut, it's fucking, yeah. fucking tough, mate. But there we go. Lesson, yeah. lessons. It's Do not you, a lesson, um... mate, it's a lesson. I don't know if we've spoke about it before on the podcast or whether we've spoke about it in person, but do you like Rocky? Rocky, the film. Yeah. We've never spoken about it. Um, I haven't <laughs> haven't watched it in years. But yeah, Mate. it could be a solid film. The original one, the first one though. Right. Watch Rocky 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? And that mindset that like Rocky has is what you've got to have in anything. Mm -hmm. Like Rocky, Rocky's like class because it's not about some guy that just goes and wins everything. It's a guy that like, is completely normal. Like I see myself and I'm sure how you see yourself. And if he loses a lot, he gets punched in the face a lot, but it doesn't stop him. It just keeps going. And that's mm -hmm. how like we've got to be. It's how I've got to be now. I've been punched in the face and knocked out in the last, in the last showing. I've got to pick myself back up and crack on. Like it didn't even happen. Just like Rocky would. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, what, what, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? What other options do you have? Oh, the other option that I've got, mate, is ringing Virgin Atlantic up and trying to get a refund. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, mate. Oh, dear. Um, did you write any topics of conversation down? I wrote one down. You know me, mate. I don't think, I just do. All right. Yeah. So I didn't write anything. Nice. Nice. Um, so my topic of conversation that I'm bringing to the table this week... At what point is it acceptable? What's the earliest acceptable point to put your Christmas tree up? Ooh, um, I would say... Is yours up? No, no. Is this a heated debate you're having with Annabelle now? <laughs> Annabella. Um, 
<laughs> not heated because because I never win a debate with Annabella. Annabella wins everything. So <laughs> it could be if Annabella was up for a heated debate, but she'll just win. Okay, fair enough. Um, I would say just first of December, man. First of December, right. Mm-hmm. Just that curiosity, what do you think I am? What, in terms of the date? Like, when do you think I want to put the Christmas tree up? Mid-November. May, mid-November, start of November. I'd have had it up after, like, day after Halloween. Oh, so she's the one who's like, no. She's like, Josh, calm down now. It's Annabella's birthday this month on the 23rd of November. Everyone wish happy birthday, yeah? Cheers. You're going to um, put the Christmas tree up for her birthday? <laughs> I want us to put it up before because, you know, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. She's having none of it. She's, okay. she's vetoed it. It's not happening. Got to wait until... Uh, I think I think we're doing it in two weeks. So that's that's like not too 25th bad, mate. 25th or something. 26th. Do you, know what? Do you know what? Don't put it up yet because I feel like psychologically that's like a... It's like a relaxation thing. You don't need to slow down right now, mate. You need to speed up. You need to get the job done. Whereas like Christmas tree up, it's like, ooh, nice and cozy. It's like, nah. I might just sit down and not do my yeah. steps. Do you know yeah, what? all right. Steps. I like it. Nah. I get it. Kick back, okay. hot chockey, some marshmallows in there. More coffee, bro. More coffee. <laughs> dip your dip your uh, dip your biscuits in there and just chill out, Josh. Don't worry about Seattle. It's fine. Seattle, Seattle's ages away. It's yeah. definitely not Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, people. There's no episode on Wednesday. You're going to have to wait because Josh is, uh, Josh is abandoning us. Jet setting, bro. I can't wait. Cannot fucking wait. Uh, I'll t- I tell you what is exciting and is coming this week. In fact, when's this, go- when's this podcast going live? Wednesday. This is going live Wednesday. Right, so it will be live right now, people. The first episode of the Houston, the Texas Files, I think we've called it, is live. I'm telling you, right, it's it's a very short YouTube video, it has to be said, but it's quality. Sam has nailed it. And I think we're having like three or four videos from the time in Texas, and they're all going to be top-notch. Sick. Go check it out, people. I've, I'm, I'm going to put it in my notifications, mate. I'm going to put it... Well, no, I get notifications anyway when you upload. So there we go. Oh, good answer. Well recovered. I was going to say, don't you have notifications turned on, Thomas? Subscribe, turn post notifications on, on Josh's yes. YouTube channel. Yeah, Thank bro. you very much, people. Uh, Josh, question. Any advice for a f- natural first-time teens competitor? So I'm assuming then this person is not doing men's physique. They are doing bodybuilding because there's no men's physique teens, is there? No, there's not. Unless they are planning on doing men's physique teens and then they are going to be bitterly disappointed when they find out that that doesn't exist. Yes. Uh, so When I do get my own way with the WMBF, it will exist. I think it, it should. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I will convince them. Right, my advice for a teen competitor. Oof. Oof. I couldn't imagine. I'm, I'm low key against the teens. You what? I couldn't imagine competing as a teen. I think I think it's cruel. I think it's unfair. How come? Because you 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 barely you've not finished puberty and you're like wanting to get shreddy shreddy. I, I don't like I if if I had a magic wand, I'd just have juniors. Juniors being like, I think the junior class being up to 23 is perfect because you've not finished like doing your young man development till that point. Um, so it makes sense. What, what, why, why have a team? Just having a mm. team category, it's encouraging someone that's got like a, not a fully developed brain to get ridiculously shredded have a load of people praise them for being ridiculously shredded and restrictive on food for a very, very long period of time. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I just have something against it. Right. And that being said, Josh Campbell, who's gone and won the natural Olympia this weekend. I think he's phenomenal. I do. I love him. I think he's awesome. Finn's done a great job coaching him, but I just worry about him. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's if a team really wants to compete, yeah, they can do juniors. There's nothing stopping them. 
Yeah. There's nothing stopping them at all. You know, and there's plenty of 19 year olds that do juniors. I've got I've got a 19 turning 20 year old competing next year. Yeah. And he's in a very good position. He doesn't look like a teen, right? So, um, you know, from that regard, like if if a teen wants to compete, they're going to compete. There's nothing. But almost giving that teen category, yes, it creates a, a more level playing field for them. But because that category is there, screaming and shouting, maybe that promotes people to, more and more people to go down that route and compete maybe a little bit earlier than what they than what they should do. And again, yeah. like Josh is a, a freak, you know, an absolute freak and he's phenomenal. But at the same time, not everyone is Josh, you know? Yeah. So he's, he's such a minority, right? The way that I see teens as well, because I have had, I have had one person, I think Tom Hermitage competed as a teenager. Um, What was my point? This is prep brain. The, Josh. It's literally just my brain's just gone. He's an exception. Right. Um, yeah, so Josh is that good. He could probably win junior classes. In fact, not probably. He definitely could win junior classes. Well, he so, won the overall the mid- at the WMBF novice. He beat yeah. all the other classes. So so that that's, that's that, isn't it? If you are a really good team, you are probably going to be a really good junior. But the 80%, and genuinely it is 80%, if not more, I always find like the junior classes, having judged now multiple shows, it's like one person that's decent. The rest are not up to standard. And it's like the the effort that they've put in, yeah, all right, yeah, you can admire it, whatever. But they're just going to end up with, this is not all teens as well, by the way, before anyone starts DMing me or cancelling me. The chances of you getting like body dysmorphia or eating... um, God, eating disorders. My brain is gone. Um, at a young age, is obviously going to be a lot higher than someone that's like, you know, mid-20s, 30, whatever. Um, yeah. Just, yeah you're, just a lot, you're a lot more mentally... Um, underdeveloped. Yeah. And underdeveloped. And physically underdeveloped as well. You know, and if you're talking about like a sport where it is, you know we are promoting muscle growth and development and, you know, the body in its best form. Like if you're restricting that, like this is like whenever, whenever like a young lad comes to me and he asks for advice, like unless you are like fat, like obese, do not diet. Like just don't diet. Like you are restricting yourself. You are potentially even stunting your growth. And if you're like dieting to the point where like you've got near enough, you know, like glute definition, of course that's going to be having a big, big effect on like your hormones, which are trying to trying to surge, trying to rage in order to mature your body to where it naturally need, you know wants to go. And if you're restricting that, then it's fucking Yeah, it's not good. But then uh, you know, even just like the mental implications long term, as you said as well, mate, you know, um even like you know, I competed when I was 23 and it had definitely had like a big effect on my mental health afterwards as well. Learning how to deal with going from being in competition shape to then gaining weight again. Like it was a bit of a really? shock to the system. And um, I was like 20, 23 years old. It wasn't like bad by any means, yeah. but it was just like, oh, you know, it, it's varying degrees, isn't it? It's like, I would like shy away from like posting anything on Instagram. And yeah. obviously that, yeah. you know, like you're just like, I'll oh, just post if you're someone that's posting constantly just shredded throwbacks, yeah. you still identify as that person that is shredded. Yeah, mate, you you that, are not that's, accepting that's that's it, right? If you identify as a bodybuilder, you identify as every part of the bodybuilding journey. Prep, mm-hmm. off season, when you're injured or when you're like, you know, peak strength, all of it, you've got to document it, you've got to be transparent. Like, and you've got to own it and enjoy it and you know, respect other people for going through it. Yeah, don't just be all about the shreds. Don't, don't. It's just a silly, silly move. This is, and if you, if you ident, like, so if you compete as a teen and you identify then and you you typically, and you haven't got that mindset and you always struggle to not identify as, as someone that is shredded, long term, it's just going to hold you back because you're not going to want to push in off season. You're not going to want to fully commit to that phase. And like, uh, it happens all the time. And like, Uh, what I like to do is really break it down into like raw elements. It's like, okay, so the benefits of being shredded and being in competition shape 
it's impressive. You get compliments. You're constantly flooded with praise. You feel good on some days. You look back on your stage photos. It gives you confidence. You're proud of what you've achieved. But what are the negatives? There's a fucking long list. Like it's a big ass long list of like negatives when it comes to being like, you know, in competition shape. It's not enjoyable. It's not fun, right? <clears throat> um, however, flip the script. When we want to ad- identify someone that is in an off season, all right, think about the benefits. There are so many benefits. It's actually a joke. You know, yeah. Dietary flexibility, social flexibility, uh, performance in the gym, rather than focusing your mindset on, you know, feeling that enjoyment or that satisfaction from getting compliments from other people about or what you see in the mirror shift yeah. it to your training shift yeah. it to your training you know hunt down that kind of feel good because that mate, as a human you just want to feel good like that's all we want we just we, we seek out praise not praise we seek out that 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 hit of just like dopamine what's going to make us feel good so rather than getting that from how you physically look just get that from your training you can it's just going to take that shift and that mindset yeah definitely mate Definitely. As you were going to say. You are? You were going to say something. Oh, I, I worked with a guy a few years, eh, two years ago. It might have been like one of my first people to have on stage. I won't name him and I won't, you know, whatever. Um, but he was an incredibly successful teen bodybuilder on the enhanced side of the sport. And I had him... All I did for him was like his programming and help him with his like nutrition. I didn't do anything gear wise at all, but he couldn't do an off season. I was like, mate, why don't you want to do an off season? Like, why can't you commit to it? It's like, oh no, uh, no one's bothered about an off season. I was like, well, why, why are you bothered? What everyone else is thinking. And like, I still follow this kid on Instagram, but he's like, you know, he's like late twenties now. He's nowhere near his potential. Nowhere near. Like, I remember first seeing him at my first ever show thinking this guy's going to be like Mr. Olympia in the next three, four years and just couldn't do the growing thing because he was just so obsessed with um, that like the instant gratification of likes and praise from randomers on Instagram. It was just mind blowing. Oh dear. Do it for yourself. You are. Do it for yourself. Um, Yes. Anything else, Tom? Any other awesome topics of conversation that your brain can spit out right here, right now? To be honest with you, mate, I think I think that's good. I think that's good. I think. I think. I think we'll, we'll, we'll we'll leave it there. All right. We'll leave some spiciness for next time. Yes. We're an hour in now. All right, and we we'll uh, we'll leave you to go and eat, mate, because uh, I think you need to go get your steps in, get moving, and uh, box off the evening, mate. All right. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Thank, thanks, Tom. Thanks, Coach Tom. Appreciate that, That's mate. Okay. Permission right then, granted. guys. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, uh, All In Bodybuilding. I nearly called it Natural Bodybuilding. Don't know why. All In Bodybuilding launch on Friday. Use code BSB15 or to get discount off the new stuff and whatever stuff they've got on the site currently. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.